Okay, let's do one more example about oxygen dosage in a hyperbaric environment. Why is this so important? It's important because we wanna make sure that the patients are actually getting what we think that they're getting. So if there's a protocol that says the patient needs this setup for their condition, let's say 1.5 um, atmospheres at 100% oxygen, we wanna make sure that they're getting a PO2 of 1.5, that they're actually being exposed to the environment that's gonna allow them to get the amount of oxygen that we want them to get. Another reason is we wanna make sure that if we're communicating with other healthcare professionals, that we're all speaking the same language. So if a patient needed to go somewhere else for treatment or they're coming from somewhere else to your office for treatment, that we're all speaking the same language and we all understand what the clinical role and the benefits are going to be of this particular protocol, of this particular uh, treatment. So the PO2 is the dosage. Why? Because pressure is what creates the gradient and the gradient is what's allowing the gas to move into our plasma, move into our tissue. Without a gradient, we don't get gas movement, period. Okay, so we went over this already. PO2, the pressure of the oxygen, the dose, the gradient, is a, is a measure of a fraction, the percentage of, the, of gas that is oxygen times the pressure that we're, that we're putting the gas to. And so in the example we had before, one and a half atmospheres at 100% oxygen had a PO2 of 1.5 times one, 1.5. 1 1.5 atmospheres using an oxygen concentrator, which is about 94% oxygen, is gonna have a PO2 of 1.4. Point four. Now, another particular uh, difference between clinics and machines that we're using in our offices are how, how is the patient actually breathing the air or the oxygen in? Are they wearing a hood? Is the environment oxygenated? Or are we piping it in separately through a different device? And so if they're wearing a hood and it's sealed perfectly, well, then maybe they're getting 100% oxygen. So that would be a similar scenario like this. But if we're using an oxygen concentrator, and uh, that's already 94% oxygen, they're getting less. Or if you're using a uh, non-rebreather mask and it doesn't fit right, you could be getting uh, ambient air being breathed in at the same time as the oxygen you're piping in. So all of a sudden, you're gonna start to see lower and lower percentages. So if you know that you're using a 94% oxygen concentrator and you're using a not fabulously fit mask, which basically even a decent non-rebreather mask usually has about 10% loss. So you might already be at 84%, not the 94% it's piping in, but what's the oxygen at their mouth that they're actually, or their nose that they're actually breathing in. And so a one and a half atmospheres at 84% is actually a PO2 of 1.2. And so all of a sudden you had a machine that went to 1.5 but because you were using a concentrator with a leaking mask, you're only getting 84%, and now their dosage is 1.2. Clearly, that dosage is less than the 1.5 that they were being asked for. And so that's why this is so important. Some pretty subtle changes inside the environment, the, the equipment that you're using for breathing, the equipment that you're using for a chamber, they all make a difference, and they all change the, uh, the gradient, which means that they all change the amount of absorption the patient's going to have. So that being said, it doesn't mean you can't recreate the exact same um, dosage that you were shooting for in the first place. So if the goal was one and a half atmospheres at 100% oxygen, and so the, the, the dosage we were looking for was a PO2 of 1.5, and let's say we had um, an oxygen concentrator, but it was perfectly fit, so we were getting 94, and we knew that the patient was getting 94, well, by going to 1.6 atmospheres at 94%, we can create a 1.5 PO2. Or let's say you're using an oxygen concentrator and you're using a non-rebreather that's getting 10% losses. Well, if you can go to 1.75 atmospheres at 84% oxygen, you can get 1.47, which for all intensive purposes is you know close enough to that 1.5. So my point is just to show you that if we have the ability to manipulate what the patient's using for breathing, what the internal environment is, what the pressure amounts are, and the percent oxygen that they're getting exposed to, we could very easily create similar environments 
where we could know that the patient is getting the proper dosage across the board, regardless of which equipment, which technician, um, as long as we're speaking the same language, we could be consistent with the actual dosage and the actual treatment that we want the patient to get.